This cable is capable of hacking any device it's plugged into, and today I'm going to show you how you can get your very own and deploy your first payload on this episode of Hackbyte. Those of you that watch a bunch of the videos here on Hack5 might be familiar with how much Cody and I like pranking each other with security and hacking tools. And that's why I'm really excited today. I got my very own OMG cable, which is a implant device capable of injecting keystrokes over a Wi-Fi connection. Now, my hope is I can save a payload to this device, and as soon as Cody plugs it into his MacBook, it'll deploy a Rickroll payload. Now to help me with this, I have a very special guest, MG, creator of the OMG Cable, and he's gonna walk me through flashing firmware and deploying my very own first payload. Welcome, MG. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So how would I use this OMG Cable? Like, what is its purpose? Yeah, what, what even is the OMG Cable, right? Like, it's a cool name. The, at the base feature of all of the OMG products is something called keystroke injection, which the USB rubber ducky has really paved the way for. It's where you, you, know, you plug a device into a computer, that device says, I'm a keyboard, and it types really fast, and it does whatever you can do with the keyboard, just really fast. Um, and there, there's a lot of really cool stuff that came from that. The thing that the cable kind of brings is stealth. Like the, these cables look down to the fractions of a millimeter identical to the types of cables your target is likely to already have in the environment. It, it's, it's hidden inside of these connectors. So instead of just walking up to a computer and plugging it in, these devices can stay in play. They can stay in the target environment and keep rerunning. That's, yeah, I guess that basically sums it up. So there are several different flavors of the OMG cable and the plug, uh, different connector types. Uh, could you briefly discuss, you know, I'm just wanting to get started. I just want to uh, hack my friend's laptop with his permission, mind you. You know, how do, how do I get started with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So th yeah, there's a whole lot to choose from, right? So. Yeah, and there's there's different like tiers like oh they have extra features and things like that but so for this video let's cover just the basic key logging feature that all of the devices have whether it's the plug which is basically a little uh keychain type you know it's just the end of the cable effectively right um that carries a lot of the light features of that the cables have um there's many different types of cables themselves, but ultimately what you gotta know is that there is an active end on these cables, and that comes in either the type A connector or a type C connector. And that's the end, that, again, we're calling that the active end, that you plug into a target device and the ducky script payload, or keystroke injection, will then be transmitted out. So, you know, if I'm on a modern MacBook with type C, that I want to attack, there we go, it's type C in. It's really about just whatever the use case is of the target environment, what's gonna look like it belongs there and be more likely to be used by your target. That sounds really cool. I actually have my own uh, OMG cable right here. So how about you walk me through the process of flashing my very own uh, firmware? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really easy process. Um, on all the envelopes, you're gonna see a URL that says go to uh, o.mg.lol slash setup. And that's gonna lead you to whatever direction we need to go depending on your product. Yeah, so you're gonna go to that web flasher. And as you can see, it is an easy three-step process. Now this, is, uh, this web flasher is supported by Chromium-based browsers. So Chrome, uh, Edge, Opera, things like that. And now all you need is your cable, your programmer. Uh, you're also gonna need an additional cable, just a USB cable to connect the programmer to your computer. Now, if at any point in any of these three steps, you're, you need a little more clarity, um, or maybe you're having trouble with it, just click that help button. There's a lot of contextual help. So right here, it's gonna show you exactly you know, how to plug it in, depending on what programmer you have, and additional details that uh, may be helpful for you. So for instance, you have this A to C programmer. That's our universal one where all the devices work. It's got some debug LEDs on there to tell you that when you connect the programmer to your computer, you're gonna get a power LED. And then when you plug the OMG cable into the OMG side of the programmer, you're gonna get another LED. Awesome. Uh, so I've plugged uh, it into the computer and the OMG cable, and I have power and cable LEDs. 
perfect. All right, we can close out of that. Just hit continue because you plugged it in. And now we're gonna connect. Most machines, uh, at least current machines, especially uh, Mac, uh, Ubuntu, they're gonna have the drivers preloaded for this programmer. If you don't have it, like if that window came up and there's nothing to select from, either you don't have the programmer properly plugged in or you just don't have the drivers, it's really easy. It's a CP2102, it's a very standard USB to serial bridge. And uh, there's a link again in that help menu for step two that shows you where to get that driver and install it. It's usually the only thing that really comes up for people. So it's gonna prompt you and right up there, you're gonna have a device. Now that you've connected, you will just flash it at this point. So go ahead and hit program. Now tip is to leave this as your top window. Chrome dramatically slows down the serial connection if you background the tab. I would have never realized that. Yeah, most, I mean, it's pretty fast to begin with. Boom, it's done. So before you close the screen, we're gonna see a couple things here. One, there's a Wi-Fi SSID and the corresponding password. We're using the default of o.mg for the SSID and the password being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And right below that, we're gonna see that you need to now unplug your cable from the programmer and stick it into a standard USB port. Keep it a little bit to power up. It's usually only a few seconds. And then you're gonna open up a controlling device this is the device you connect to the cable and control it. Uh, so that can be a phone, it can be a laptop, anything with Wi-Fi can connect up to this thing. Look in your uh, available networks, you're gonna see o.mg, connect up to it with that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight password. Give it a little bit to make sure you get an IP address and everything like that. And then go to your web browser and go to 192.168.4.1, hit enter, and it's gonna load up the controller uh, web UI. So in here, it's right off the bat, you can just start typing um, ducky script payloads if you know them. Now, if you don't, and this is new to you, click that help button in the upper right. So under this help menu, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff. Um, for instance, the Hack5 community payloads. There's an entire repo of payloads that people have submitted. And that's gonna be up on GitHub. And then below that, we've got some onboard included example payloads, just kind of give you an idea of what, what can be done here. And below that, we got a whole bunch of syntax guides about all the different things, that, whether they're basic syntax or even the more advanced features like self-destruct or geofencing, things like that. This is all uh, included. All right, so as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different things in this help menu that are gonna point you into whatever direction you wanna explore. But for purposes of this video, let's do something really easy. Let's do let's do a Rickroll, right? So you've got your cable plugged into one Mac that will be attacking, and then using another Mac, you're connecting to the Wi-Fi of the OMG cable. When we're dealing with Macs, the command key is very much like the Windows key, and it's like, in terms of keyboards, that's literally the same key. So when it comes to Ducky Script, we just universally call this the GUI key, G-U-I. So if command space is what we want to type, in our payload box, we're going to put GUI space. All uppercase, exactly. So that'll open up Spotlight. And then you can type, and I think we're going to use, what, Safari here. So you want to type a bunch of uh, strings out. That's what we call string. So go ahead and type capital string space, and then Safari. And then imagining we're at the keyboard again, what do we type here next? We're gonna type enter to submit that. And that's capital enter. Um, now, what do we do after that? It's gonna open up the browser and we're gonna be focused, the cursor is gonna be focused inside of the URL field. So we just need to uh, put our Rickroll URL here. And again, that's another string. So capital string and then Rickroll URL. And then to submit that, we would hit enter again. Before we move forward, there's a couple things here. Now that's that's a, that's the sequence of keystrokes needed here, but a human doesn't type them at lightning speed the way an OMG cable would. That creates a few problems. Like for instance, when we open up Safari, that's not gonna be ready to start using within you know, 10 milliseconds. We're gonna need maybe give that a, a few seconds to open up. Um, so when you're writing a payload from scratch, a really good, um, good practice is to just every other line put a significant delay in here. So let's actually do that here. 
Yeah, capital delay, space, and let's use 1000, which means 1000 milliseconds or one second. And we'll just do that after every single line here. And I suspect we're probably gonna need a few more seconds on the um, on the Safari, after we hit enter on Safari. So, you know, let's let's bring that up to, uh, let's, let's make it 10 seconds right after you hit enter. That should be everything. So go ahead and hit run, and we're gonna see what happens on our target machine. There you go. That's waiting, 10 seconds. This is good though, we can watch this and be like, yeah, we could totally shorten that up. <laughs> there we go. Thanks for that great walkthrough, MG. Now, if you wanna deploy some more advanced payloads, be sure to check out the payloads hosted on the Hack5 GitHub page and find your favorite and post it in the comments below so no one else misses it. If you have troubleshooting issues or just wanna hang out with MG, don't be afraid to join the Discord linked in the description below. Otherwise, we'll see you on next week's episode of Hackbyte. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack